Good morning brothers and the occasional sister. Well, uh, it's uh, Monday morning and I've just been down having a coffee with a group of mates, a little local group. Sometimes we just meet randomly, have a coffee and talk and it's good to have a wee group. And of course this morning's discussion was dissecting the game, All Blacks against South Africa for the World Cup. And I think that uh, game will be dissected for many years afterwards if you guys watched it. Very, very close. One point, and some things, I don't know, debatable, but that's what happens, isn't it? After all, it is just a game. Although in New Zealand, a lot of people say it's not just a game. I've been hunting all weekend, both afternoons. Still got bits of stuff in the truck, my bloody unit, and the radio to talk to the young fella. The dog collars for tracking them, sitting in here. And uh, a few other things, and maybe some things in the truck that probably shouldn't be in there, like ammunition. Uh, no pig, but uh, taking young Lucas out on the hill and really working hard. And I was a bit disappointed because we really gave it absolute arseholes. A bit like the All Blacks playing the South Africans, really gave it absolute arseholes to try and uh, get a pig. Not only for young Lucas, but also for a lot of the people that... Uh, that pay to watch my stuff and I'd like to put something up a little bit unique and special and interesting on that but um, nothing there for them either so uh, you guys that support me sorry I haven't got any uh, great uh, footage I've had two week two weekends of going bloody hard uh, no pork in the freezer uh, not the, the main freezer I've got a little bit in the, uh, the the small freezer but no pork and no fish either so I'm going to get it for a fish and hopefully catch one tomorrow that's on the plan this morning I'm heading back to the the uh, homestead to start work on my houseboat. Just driving through my little township, uh, Mapua Swell on the right hand side, local pub my mate owns. He's just about to move out of it. And on the left hand side, our fire brigade. This is Ewa Street. A lot of folk doing their morning walk this morning with the dogs. One of the most popular places in the world to live is Mapua. And uh, my ex girlfriend, she actually came from uh, Japan and she she looked all around the world and came down to two places, Auckland and Mapua and this is the place she ended up and it's how I met her many years ago. Not many streets to see a boat parked on the side of the road is there? But this used to be a little fishing village, it used to be paddle crabs was a bit of an industry here but that disappeared. As we go through the uh, township, uh, I'm just going to go through what uh, this morning's uh, chat was about and how it could help a brother. So uh, if you're joining the Brochet Club for the first time, this is a channel that I've created for helping young men, but also old men as well. For brothers, it's a man's channel for men, although I don't mind the occasional sister joining us. And uh, today I want to talk briefly about uh, one of the uh, young men that I met about year ago I was buying a boat I won't say his name but I've been having a coffee with his dad this morning and his mum and he was a guy that uh, liked mixed martial arts fighting which I love and I still watch mixed martial arts today and I've got my favourites and that and this young guy he wanted to make it his whole life and that but he sustained a terrible injury to his head and it really made him unwell and the old head you know you've only got one and it can take so many knocks but uh, and I've had a few in my life and they can, it can be devastating. So he received a really bad blow to his head and it took a long time to come right. And he was really missing his mixed martial arts, he wanted to get back into it. And I was actually buying a boat, I was going to buy a boat off, off his dad. One of my uh, patrons, Ross the knife maker, had said, I want you to buy this boat. Ross has since passed away. He passed away in the last year of he had heart heart issues. He was one of the seven men that was on the same journey as me, and he uh, didn't make it. Another story for another day. Ross was an awesome, awesome bloke and a friend of mine. And he'd said to me, "Look, I'm sick of seeing you in your homemade boat. Go and get yourself a decent boat." And I said, "Well, I just can't afford it right now." He said, "Look, I'm in a rest home." I've just sold my I've just sold my house. I've got six and a six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I want you to go and buy a brand new boat and I'm gonna pay for it. And I said, no, I can't accept that from you, Ross. I just can't. And he said, no, I want you to do it. And I said, nah. And he said, well at least look at one. So I went and looked at one to please him and I looked at this one that uh, that Eric was selling, the guy that uh, and his son. 
and uh, so I had a look at the boat and I was talking to his son he was telling me about where it was at with his mixed martial arts and I said to him this I said you you've got one life you've got one chance and this goes out to any of you young guys that uh, that are doing uh, any sort of martial arts and I did Sado karate when I was younger did a bit of boxing did a bit of wrestling so I understand the need to wanting to fight but you really have to look after that bit of jelly between your ears and basically I said to his son you might be passionate about it but realistically if you're going to if you're going to do that you have to be prepared to forfeit having a normal life if you get another blow to the head because that's what happens once you've had one blow it, it gets worse you get inflammation um, things start to go wrong one thing you need to repair anything is you need an environment for it to repair it, and that means rest and to start fighting again when you've had a really bad concussion so um, he followed the channel he was actually one of my patrons he followed the channel and he was a hunter like like me and uh, I really I said that you really don't want to do this bud there's so many other things you can do with your life. And don't jump into your hunting more. Put your energy into that. And that's exactly what he's done. And right now as I'm talking to you, he's down, down south shooting fellow deer. So he moved away from doing what it was he was real passionate about. And he found a new passion. Because our passion shouldn't be that destructive that we end up destroying our mental capabilities and that. And if you're doing rugby, boxing, uh, Sado Karate, all of those things, they all carry some risk. And I'm not against fighting, but if you've had an injury already once, it might be time to just change direction a bit. It would be silly to get an injury on an injury, because that could really be devastating. Sometimes you get a second chance, sometimes you don't. And we all know it, and uh, I'm not about going through this life. I'm full of injury. I've got injury all over me. I've got sciatic nerve that keeps me awake all night from a motorbike accident, and from also uh, working too much when I was in Europe. I've got uh, injury to my rotator cuff that I ripped when I was going down to the bale pig hunting uh, years ago. I've got, oh, I've just got multiple. And uh, most of those injuries, the majority of them have a story behind them where I was doing something living. And you've got to live life, don't you? I've got children that do uh, serious whitewater rafting and even more dangerous whitewater kayaking. I'll just uh, pause for a minute. It's early in the morning, so I'm I'm driving and filming, which I shouldn't really be doing, but uh, there's just no cars on the road. It's just like, it's just after seven, but I did see a car up in front of me, so I thought I'd put the camera down for a minute. And I'm driving, driving like 40k per hour. Um, best we can do for our, our young men, uh, men out there, is to promote healthy sports and healthy activities, but also keep them safe, and that means uh, mitigating any further damage if they have damage and sustained damage whether they're in the boxing ring or whether they're any any sort of sport at all give it a chance to uh, to heal you know, my children do what would a kayaking and my daughter particularly uh, Dayla she's seen one of her friends drown my son's seen two people drown one who which died and one which didn't one which he saved and one which didn't the one that didn't was my was my nephew and the girl he saved had been underwater for three minutes that's a uh, white water what would a kayaking um, it's a dangerous sport my mate who's building my shed right now lost his son lost his son uh, four years ago drowning doing doing that there it's all of these things carry danger I still maintain though that whatever you do the most dangerous uh, element of anything any sport or anything is driving to the zone where you do it in your car um, by so, you know something crazy happening on the road and not necessarily being your fault but more people die with uh, road accidents than actually die by hunting more people die at road accidents than whitewater kayaking I guess uh, per capita per head and you have to look at the uh, the numbers on that there to what it actually is but I'm pretty sure that um, oh, she's a bit, you can see the old driver needs to Sorry about that for you guys watching on a big screen. The driveway needs to have a bit of a uh, grader put over it. That's not even my driveway. My driveway's worth the worst. I'm using my neighbour's one here on the farm. There's a lot of things I need doing. The other thing I need doing is I need the power sorted because I've only got uh, half my power running right now. Right, back home. Uh, today's Brochek Club is about that. And uh, I hope that also this uh, Brochek 
find you well guys I'm just gonna go and check the dogs I'll take you with me because uh, it was still early when I went out this morning it was 6 30 when I left I went down to the beach had a walk and see what the dogs are looking like poor old nut he'll be pretty buggered now I gotta check it out I gotta tear into the day I'm working on the houseboat today g'day nut how you doing mate hey boy you all right buddy hey how you doing hey Love old dogs, eh? You good boy? You yeah, had a good crack. We nearly got the pig yesterday. Jeez, we got close and we paced. We had like three runs. Oh, pace will be sore. Good boy. There you go, mate. Eh? Hey? You all right? Eh? Hey? And how's Poe? Right, we're going to take you guys for a walk before we do anything. Not that you probably need one. You've done so many kilometres this weekend, eh? Poe's doing really well for an old dog. She's doing really good. Come on, Poe. We'll go down and check out the goats and see if they're still in the paddock. Hey, uh, brothers, have a blessed day. Go steady. And if you are doing anything that's like really, really dangerous and you've already had a concussion, maybe it's time to find a new passion. You can actually turn yourself around. I've gone from one thing to another. I used to love playing music. It was my whole life. Really, really loved it. And I tore my rotator cuff going down to the bale. And that's how I became a YouTuber. It's the only reason I became a YouTuber. I, I couldn't do concerts anymore. Now, I did teach music for a while, but I wasn't really that passionate about it. I taught music for six and a half years in all the schools, but it was not really me just sitting in a classroom all day or tutoring one-on-one. -on -one. It was a good lesson to be a teacher for six and a half years because it gave me an appreciation of how hard it is to be a teacher, but it was not until I picked up the camera and started filming what I was doing, which was still hunting and still doing a bit of everything, that I uh, found out that I was actually quite passionate about creating content. And then uh, a whole bunch of good bastards got together and they created my Patreon for me. And from then on that sort of helped keep it going. And it's, it kind of found its own way. But what the point being is I was really passionate about music and now I'm really passionate about creating content. Particularly what I know it helps other people. So if you've got something you're really passionate about and you've had an injury and it's to do with a sport that could cause that to happen again, maybe rethink because you only get one chance quite often. Go steady. I'll see you in the next Bro Check Club video. See you later. Okay, old dog, old dog. Old dog, old dog. We're taking you for a walk. See ya.